Good evening, everybody. If you could uh, grab your last drinks and food and uh, come join us, I'd love to welcome you to the Cappy Awards and Fashionwear here at CES 2014. So the first thing we're going to do is celebrate children in all their glory because they are the next digital citizens in the 21st century. They need the magic, they need the best tools, and we have some judges and presenters and awardees tonight who have worked incredibly hard to make magic for children. First, Warren Buckleitner from Children's Technology Review, my good friend, MC of the Cappy Awards, and the Kids of Play Summit. Thank you, Robin. Robin, you really do light up a room tonight. Uh, yeah, show us. Oh. Oh, yeah. This is a fashion show. We would, we would like to think that you all came here to celebrate uh, pedagogy and children's interactive media. But something in me thinks that the models wearing flashing accessories might have another part for the attendance. But this is the a very important part of the evening. It is the celebration of the best in interactive design and leadership. And it's a very important thing for myself personally, as well as 14 other judges that consider 800 toys, apps, and products produced this year. After three long debates, we came up with the eight winners that we're gonna celebrate, and some of them are here tonight. <laughs> So Robin, we, uh, who were the judges? Mark Schlichting, Noodle Works, Dan, Dan Donahue, Chip Donahue, No Relation, David Kleeman, Ann McCormick, Frank Migliorelli, Renee Rice, Carly Schuler, Andrea Smith, Rebecca Levy, Scott Trailer, Richard Gottlieb, who's over at the Hong Kong Toy Fair now, and how can I describe this? Many hours of conference calls debating the merits of what makes good kids software and hardware, and many really, really like vocal discussions. So many, many of the people in this room tonight are winners in one way or another. To protect the integrity of the award, jurors would recuse themselves from products in which they had an interest. We were able to attract some of the leading minds in, behind interactive media and technology. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the winners for 2014. Three of the jurors are here. Would you guys please come up? Andrea Smith, Renee Rice, and Carly Schuler. That's the best you can do. Really? Really? Okay. So, number one, innovation. The award is to Neos Play World Systems. With light scoreboards and electronic interaction, these playground systems are a step into the future. Purchased primarily for use in public spaces, these new age playgrounds build the best of physical and electronic worlds. For years, digital play has been relegated to couch potato status. Playworld Systems leverages technology to support and enhance outdoor play. The playground experience becomes interactive, mixing cognitive and gross motor skills. Is Playworld Systems here? Are they playing somewhere? Aha! We have some oh, here. All right. All right. Children's content can be equally appealing to grown-ups. A formula, excuse me, a formula applied by storytelling masters throughout the ages. 
a complete collection of apps, activities, and games, all of the Storybot titles are, award are award-worthy. If Walt Disney were alive today, this is the type of work he'd be doing. And today to accept the award is Greg Spiridellis, one of the founders. <laughs>
uh, if you've ever seen this, you know that when Steve Jobs needed a nap to show off that I had one, Andrew. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's your transition. Mid sentence transition is so good. Pioneering team is Touch Press, a series of digital coffee table books including Disney Animated and The Elements. These luscious graphics with clean, smart interface and some really visual ways to make these topics come to life. And as Warren mentioned, when Steve Jobs needed that stunning app to show off the iPad, he used the Elements, which was the very first app put together by Touch Press. Today, the team at Touch Press has set the standard for beauty and usability for nonfiction apps. Their latest example, Disney Animated, makes Disney film making history come to life in new ways. Touch Press continues to raise the bar, bringing magic to the fingertips of kids of all ages. To call these uh, uh, coffee table books is really uh, underserved. Um, you can see how they unlock archives or museums and put them at a child's fingertips. Um, that's the internet. In, in real time over the last, since 1994. Um, this is a, a transatlantic pipeline. And so they really do live up to the name, name Touch Press. Their flight was grounded, or they couldn't get through the East Coast of the United States to accept the prize, but they did record a message for us. And you're the first to see the people behind the Touch Press process. So I'm very pleased to show you this video. We have an incredible team here, and it's just great to see them acknowledge all their hard work, their imagination, their creativity. Um, it, it can be actually really difficult to do this stuff, because it's new, and I believe it is helping to change the world in the sense that it's making uh, open and accessible uh, a lot of difficult subjects. And this technology is just a wonderful way to educate people, to entertain people, and to make people more appreciative of the world. And we try really hard to do that. And uh, the recognition that you're giving us uh, tonight is uh, enormously appreciated and enormously welcome and will inspire us, I hope, to continue to make some great apps this year. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> so that's my press. And we're going to just run back really quickly and give this last award here before we do our pioneer. And that is one of the most incredible apps. I think this was unanimous among the jurors that this app just really raised the bar. I'll let you look at a little bit of this because um, you can get a sense of, of the... Uh, and I'm, I'm so glad the speakers are good because what a better way to start a fashion show than with this sound. <laughs>
is explored, judged, and put the spotlight on only the best for children. He's constantly rethinking what a quality screen-based experience should be. He does this in more, many ways, including cinema, in contests like the Free Genoese, who we hate to say that, and as a senior fellow of the Fred Rogers Center um, for Early Learning and Children's Media, and at the American Center for Children's Media, and now at Play Collective, you can see this is one man with a mission. You will soon get to meet David personally, and you'll understand that he is tuned in to, to what counts, and that's children. He is excellent at carving through a very foggy business with provoking conversation. He keeps developers thinking, and educators and researchers doing their best work. His voice is heard worldwide as a moral compass, and a pa he's a passionate evangelist for excellence in children's publishing. I'd like to call Dave Kleeman to the stage. I know well who has uh, stood here the past few years before me, and that just deepens the honor for me. Uh, Dale Darty has worked to spark the, the maker movement, calls to mind a wonderful quote from Fred Rogers. No matter what the machine may be, it was people who thought it up and made it, and it's people who make it work. Mark Schlichting, last year, exemplifies for me the idea that if you start from insight, empathy, and creativity, technology will adapt to accommodate your vision. And Gu Wang stood here and serenaded us with a digital musical instrument he had made himself. All these pioneers make wonderful, tangible things that engage, delight, entertain, challenge, and inspire children. I recognized early on that I wasn't cut out to build things, to make things, but that I had both an inclination and an ability to make things better. In some contexts, that would be called being a busybody. But I've always tried to use to support and extend creators' visions and not usurp them. Engage creators in thoughtful give and take, introduce them to new perspectives or possibilities, and encourage them to keep refining, because in children's media, good enough isn't good enough. I love watching producers perfect tiny details of their program, their game, or their app, things that no child, no parent would ever notice, but they would. My pioneer's journey can be traced actually to a single hour in 1975, a lecture by one of the creators of Sesame Street, Jerry Lesser, when I was a college freshman. I was already kind of unusual. I was a male studying to be a preschool teacher at Harvard. <laughs> My roommates were all reading political philosophy and studying organic chemistry, and I was watching the electric company and reading the little engine that could. I think I won. <laughs> a pioneer's view changes constantly. In 40 years in children's media, I've never been bored. Woody Allen said that 80% of success is just showing up, but I think I've been really lucky about showing up at the right time. I started out in what you might call Oxcart days when children's media meant TV. There wasn't very much of it and none of it, almost none of it, was developmentally focused. We traded up to a cattle team with the arrival of multi-channel cable and a horseless carriage with the advent of CD-ROMs. When packaged media gave way to the internet, the uh, rutted pioneer track became the information superhighway. And the horseless carriage that we were on originally now speeds like a Ferrari, but it's got the load capacity of an 18-wheeler. We've gone from four channels to YouTube, from the box in the corner to anything, anytime, anywhere, from what we want to tell you to what do you want to know. I can't imagine a more stimulating and challenging era for blazing a trail through the world of children and media. And I've had great companions in doing it. Uh, pioneers' survival depended on surrounding themselves with people with complementary uh, knowledge and skills, but on a journey like that, they'd better be good company too. I've had mentors and protectors every step of the way. 
I've been the head of programming at PBS moved me from department to department until I learned all facets of broadcasting. Ten years after a short informational interview, a man named Jim Fellows remembered me and entrusted me with a festival and center. He found it a job I had for 25 years. And now my Play Collective colleagues are giving me a really powerful base of expertise and insights from which to launch new pioneering explorations. But it's really the people that I've met along the way that made the pioneering possible. Most of what I know about children, learning, and media comes from sitting up late at night with uh, the legends and the disruptors who come to Duster Magic and other conferences like this. I'm getting a little too old for the late nights, but you're never too, too old to listen. Most people know me as a connector. I love to help people with a passion realize their visions, and that often involves linking them to people with complementary information or ideas. I often joke that in an industry that's built on non-disclosure agreements, I've actually built a career building safe places for people to disclose. And children's media is special in that regard. I can't think of another area where people are so generous with their time and expertise. A friend of mine who's been in this business as long as I have, who's been making interactive media since 1977, loves to say she's been on the cutting edge so long it's a wonder she hasn't bled to death. <laughs> Maybe tonight I can borrow and adapt that using a little something from Oregon Trail since we're talking about pioneers and say, I've been pioneering so long it's a wonder I haven't died of dysentery. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think I'm anywhere near done, so thank you very much for this tonight and Westward Hope. So there's lessons in there for all of us, and he, did, he is a natural teacher, and he, he just taught me a couple things, so. Robin, um, I believe you're ready for... Second part of the evening, back to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to turn, over, turn this over to the fashion show. Happy birthday, Carol. <laughs> it's great. 